Forgiveness can be such a sensitive subject. We've often had deep pain caused by others and ourselves, and our instinctive response might be to shut down, find revenge, or numb ourselves with substances, shopping, and content. Here's the big question. Why forgive? Well, number one, it supports peace, not just in the world, but also within ourselves. Number two, we may care more about the relationship with ourselves or with others than about the grievance itself. And three, maybe, just maybe, we want to feel more free. Follow along with my seven-step process that I created. Last week, we covered step one, and today we're going to dive into step two. And then the second step is to find equanimity. So this is finding a place where we are the same, where we are one, right? And I think that this is a really interesting thing because we talk a lot about this. I feel like, especially in like the spiritual and personal development world, it's like, we are all one until something goes awry. And then we are absolutely not one. You are bad and I am good, or I am bad and you are good, or this is, you know, then there's all this hierarchy and we're like no longer even connected at all. But if we can find a place within where we are the same as the perpetrators, right? We too have been perpetrators. Can we find that place in us that is to the same? Because we are the microcosm, this like little world within ourselves of the macrocosm that is happening on a larger scale. And so if we are the microcosm of the macrocosm and something has happened that was painful, there's also that happening within us and can we identify it? And it, you know, it doesn't mean it's like to the same level, to the same degree, but it's just the, just the, even the tiniest hint of, oh, right. Same, same. I am the same as you. I am the same as you. There's nothing that you have done that I have not done right in this lifetime or another lifetime within myself to myself that there is a way in which I can find a commonality. And then we can start moving maybe out of the question of like, why me, right? This is so often the first like instinct and it's not wrong. Just like, they're like, why me? Why did this happen to me? To the like, why, why you, why would you do that? Right. It's like starting to have some understanding, trying to understand possibly what led them to this moment, what pain was happening for them, what background may they have come from just getting curious. Now this means being really brave, like really brave. And I understand that this isn't always available for all of us. And it may not be available to us in like a certain time span too. Sometimes we need quite a bit of distance in order to even be in the step of all, right? How do we get into like the curiosity, right? Even that. So I love this question about like, what about those who have like murdered, raped, et cetera? Yes. Are, do, can we find similarities? Can we find that we are the same? in some way, because the way in which we hold people who are like, have made done out atrocious things, right? Is that they are also then atrocious people rather than saying you are a person who has done an atrocious thing. And that that was a huge mistake. And there are going to be repercussions from that for you. And why would that have happened? And could I extend forgiveness? Could I extend love? Now this is like very high level forgiveness and we may not even all ever get there. But for me, this is why I think forgiveness is a lifelong thing. And why I say that there's, there's so much to forgive. It's almost endless. It's like, can I forgive that too? Can I forgive you as well? Can I allow myself to see that you are actually a human? And can I see your light? And sometimes you can, and sometimes you can't. And it's okay if you can't. It's just something to hold. Like, 
could I, could I, we get to stretch ourselves and stretch our love and stretch our capacity. We may not like people all the time. And we, the main thing is that we like to separate people from their behaviors, but from their actions to say like, I might love you, but I don't always love your actions. That is absolutely true. And that I can forgive you. And I may still want to hold you accountable for your actions. Yes, ideally. Right. So to start to understand this, and this is really a brave act to, to even be willing to look, to be willing to look, especially in the hearts of people who have done things that created a, maybe like the darkest aspect of our whole life. Are we willing to look and see? We may not be willing to right now, but it is a helpful part of forgiving to say like, I can see you. I can really see you. I can see how I can see how this led to this, led to this, led to this. And also to like actually start to get like some information about even how it happens for people in certain ways. I feel like we, there are a lot of books that I have read that I feel like re have really supported me in understanding on a deeper level, like circumstances and how that, so how that changes people and how, um, how our brain shuts down in certain ways and how drugs and alcohol impact people. And, you know, it's just like, we can, we can start to expand our care outside of our realm. No one is either all good or all bad. No one, no one is all good or all bad. They aren't evil. You aren't evil. We don't have to categorize people as all good or all bad. People are just people and we all have it all within us. Being able to see the light in others and yourself is the healing this world will grow and thrive in. I mean, you're not required to. You are absolutely not required to see the light in others. And also like, you know, people that tend to work with me like very closely when they get into like my mentorship and into my apprenticeship, this is where we really go is, can I see the light in others? Can I see your light? Because often people who are acting in such harmful ways, no one has ever even looked for their light, never has ever even looked for their light. And so if for me, I feel like that's an offering I have for the world, like why, I mean, can I bring this forward and see your light and to really be able to bring the, like, be a mirror for you of what is possible in you. And then it might bring us to the question of why us, right? Why, why this situation? Why you and me? Why this, right? And sometimes that can bring us a bigger opportunity to explore the meaning for us, right? And that gets to be up to us personally, right? I think that it isn't necessarily like finding out like the pathways, like, like, well, I made mistakes and you made mistakes and there that led me here and I was wrong and you were wrong and everyone was wrong. That's not what I'm talking about. Not the why us in that way, but why us? Like, how is this going to be for me? Like this happened, this situation, this challenge, this pain, this hurt, this trauma happened. And, and now I'm going, I get to choose if I'm going to make it for me or not. Right. I, am I going to make this situation something that is going to elevate me in my future? Or am I going to have it be something that I keep resentment and grudges around and allow it to take me down? And for me, it, this has been one of the most inspiring like contexts to actually aim at myself. So I would never aim this at somebody else. Generally, like if somebody was going through a thing, I would be like, well, like right away, like, how is this happening for you? Right. Cause I feel like that can lead to a lot of bypassing and a lot of pain, but when it's time for us personally, when it's like, I'm ready to actually make this something that happened for me, it can be one of the most powerful ways to lead your own life to say, yes, this happened. And I'm going to hella make this for me because I'm in charge of my life and I choose me. 